Monday morning, family. It's Lady Mara with this week's VP News and Views. Children's Church takes place every Sunday following praise and worship, excluding Fifth Sundays. Fernan Park, we celebrate Christian marriages. John and Dawn Hatchett, 12 years on July 23rd. Paul Austin and Denise Turner Austin, 35 years on July 23rd. Jamise and Olin Kellogg, two years on July 25th. Kenneth and Jackie Morris, 22 years on July 27th. Are you looking for ways to grow more together as a family? If so, the Vernon Park Missions Ministry is excited to announce the Summer 2023 FAST, Families Actively Serving Together Outreach Initiative. During the months of July and August, families can sign up for specific dates to serve at the Bread of Life Food Pantry in Inglewood and also Feed My Starving Children in Schaumburg. These service opportunities are designed to be a fast and impactful way to spread joy while serving together as a family. The immediate family with the most recorded service hours will receive a family fun package that will strengthen the family bond. Spots are filling up quickly, so don't wait. Visit the ministry table to reserve your fast spot today. Join the Men of Destiny third Saturdays monthly, 1230 until 230. Join the Women of Purpose on the third Saturday of August for Women of the Word. We've studied Queen Esther, Ruth, and Abigail. Let's find out who's next. Join us Saturday, August 19th, 1230 to 230. Facilitated by Minister Cassandra Ward. It's that time of year again. Mother Car's farm shares are now available. See a member of the farm team directly following service. Half shares are $275, whole shares are $475. Again, see a member of the farm team to sign up for your shares today. We are a family that prays together. Please keep the names on our sick list in your prayers. Sister Lindsay Dark. Sister Deirdre Dee Dee Farrell. And pray for our bereaved Sister Jackie and Kenneth Morris and the loss of her cousin, First Lady Margot Dawson. Deaconess Mildred and Deacon Darrell Robinson and the loss of her cousins, Sister Sandrea Walton and Sister Rashonda Thanes. Well, family, that concludes the video announcements for VP News and Views. Thank you for joining us. Amen. 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 I'm here for our Bible with you today. Let's all shout out together. God said his word to me, and I expect it to speak to me and show me my purpose. Every day, I'm making progress. How many are ready for the word of God today? Yeah. All right. We're in part three of our series, Ready, Willing, and Able. Today's message, we're going we're gonna to continue to examine um, when things start to go kind of strange in a, in a culture and, and society rejects the truth, how God's people should respond to that. Um, there's a little thing you're going to hear me say today over and over again. It's that times change, but people don't. Times change, but people don't. And so us, along with our young people today, we're going to get into the word. And I want to speak on the subject today, conduct unbecoming. Conduct unbecoming. It's, a, it's an offense in the military. And so to, to, to actually not live up or to behave up to a certain level. And, and there's also a code of conduct in the house of God and the people of God as well in the army of the Lord. So we're going to talk about that today. If you have your Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 6. And we're going to read verse 1 and verse 8 as we have um, the first three weeks. First two weeks. Um, and we pray that you get something out of this. So as we actually honor God's word, I'm going to go through a lot of scriptures in 28 minutes and 42 seconds. But since you all are the advanced class. Uh, Y'all gonna help me read, and y'all be able to figure this all out. Everybody say, I'm ready? I'm ready. Let's read. And the Bible says, 
In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Go down to verse 8, the Bible says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. That's good reading. God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. The first key I talked about a few weeks ago is that it's possible to function in simultaneous realities. It's possible as human beings to actually be in one environment but have two realities at the same time. Somebody say the word function. function. I'm going fast today, but I know y'all can keep up. The word function means to be in action, to produce an appropriate effect. Right now, the United States is going through simultaneous weather realities. It's drought in one part of America, and it's flooding in the other part of America. We are suffering from the hottest days in the history of the world in some parts of America. Everything is drying up. Rivers are drying up. Lakes are drying up. In other places, cities are flooding underground. And so it's a simultaneous reality. I believe that somebody, Pastor Frank, is operating within more than one major issue right now. Look up and down your rope. Look up and down your rope. There's somebody in your rope that's so good at hiding their other reality that you don't even notice. They're dealing with more than just you. They got on their church face. Yes, they does. We've talked about several realities. You can go back and look on, on our internet and look at the sermons. We've talked about the reality of culture. I really wish I could get to that some more today, but I can. And we also talked about the reality of consequence. The reality of consequence. Today, I want to deal with the reality of conduct. The reality of conduct. Because people of God, you cannot be the ones sitting around watching CNN and saying, oh my God, what are we going to do? If anybody should know what's happening, you should know. Why? Repeat after me. Times change, Times change. but people don't. But people don't. What's happening right now may be different in technology, may be different in the way they do it, but people do the same thing over and over and over again. It's called conduct. The word conduct means the manner in which a person behaves. Very simple. The manner in which a person behaves. Matthew Arnold said, conduct is three-fourths of our lives. Conduct is a major part of your life. And so I'm going to give you your key for the day, and the key for the day is very, very simple. It is that DNA identifies who we are, but conduct defines what we are. Very simple. Now, this is biblical, but if, if you read it, understand it, you, you won't look at the news and go, how could people do that? It's just their conduct. It's just their conduct. And so we're going to talk about that today because conduct means everything. There's a wonderful saying by Benjamin Disraeli. I think he has a really cool name, Disraeli, kind of like January. People never forget it. What did Disraeli say? Read it. He said what? Circumstances are beyond human control, but our conduct is in our own power. Amen. Conduct is how you act. Yeah. You can act wise, act wonderful, and there's some people just act like a fool. Yes. They weren't born a fool, it's just their conduct. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm not, look, I'm not trying to be popular today, but please don't treat me like I'm your enemy. <laughs> I'm just telling like it is. So much as we talked about before the sermon, what's happening on the south side, that's conduct. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's conduct. As we review what we talked about a few weeks ago, this whole story that Isaiah is volunteering to be active in, in a certain culture starts in 2 Chronicles 26 and 3, where the Bible says that this guy named Isaiah was 16 years old. He became the leader of his nation. Yeah. And in verse 5, as you remember, we talked about as long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. As long as he was seeking God, he wasn't a perfect cat, but as long as he was seeking God, God gave 
him success. So this young man's reign caused unprecedented success for his entire nation. Everybody was blessed because he was blessed. And he had the second longest reign as king in the history of Judah. And so his success made him relevant even though he was an older man. Because success makes you relevant. How many know that today? Yeah. People may not like you, but as long as you're doing better than them, they'll try to be around you. Yeah. It's called a crew. Yeah. It's called a folks that want to hang out with you. They don't like you, but they like your success. Uh -huh. If you don't think that's true, wait till you lose your job. Yeah. Wait when you cannot pay for their dinner when they go out with you. Somebody said, my, my, real fast. Thank you. you you've experienced that, haven't you? Okay. Ah. Then the Bible says in verse number 16, read with me. We talked about this last week. The Bible says what? But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride, it was the great king's unbecoming conduct that led to his downfall. It wasn't God, it wasn't the devil, it wasn't the people that didn't like him. It was him. Come on, come on. Sometimes we do stuff to ourselves. America. It was him. There is a word I want you to write down. I'll leave it on the screen for a second. It is the word unbecoming. Unbecoming. Not fitting. Not appropriate. Not flattering for the person that's doing it. Some people you expect to act like they act because they have always acted that way. It was just that one kid your parents had that y'all always had to say, don't worry about him. Yeah. He always been that way. But there are certain people that when they get out of character, they are considered unbecoming. That's why when you do something on your job that everybody else does, people will say, I thought you was a Christian. You know what? Conduct causes condemnation. When it's not what you're supposed to be. Are we still in church? I know some of us feel good, right? I got 22 minutes and 8 seconds. Knowing better and doing better are two different things. It's a conduct issue. And today we're talking about conduct unbecoming. Now, the story really jumps off when we read this very familiar text. In the year that King Uzziah died. Now I can't get to the rest of the, till probably the fifth Sunday, but we know that what was happening was a spiritual decline. And every year defined, is defined by the major events. When I say 9-11, you think of what? 2001. When I say JFK was assassinated, some of us older people know what year that was. 1963. When Dr. King was assassinated that year, and Bobby Kennedy, 1968, the Cubs finally won the World Series. Charles, that's right, he knows. The only Cub fan on the South Side is sitting right here. Paul, okay. Keep y'all separate. Then. So what happened in the year that King Uzziah died? The prophet noticed that the spiritual decline of the leadership has spread to the people. And even though he was, he was dead, things still start sliding down. And so when a leader loses their perspective, that decline can happen in a nation, and it's hard to stop it. After the king dies, the nation of Judah continues to go down and down. They still got a great army. They still got a lot of money. They're still very popular. But, but it's something about their morality that starts going down down, down. They, 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 they have free will. But how many in church know that free will costs you something? Yeah. Yeah. I love what Monisha Rahesh said. Read what she said. She said that freedom of speech does not mean freedom of consequences. Everything costs something. Conduct causes condemnation. And DNA does not only just identify who you are, but your conduct identifies what you are, how people act, no matter where, where you are. Some of you live in the neighborhood you live in because you could not stand the conduct of the neighborhood you were in. It cost you less money. It was your mama and daddy's house. 
but people around me, their conduct got really weird. And some of y'all had to move away from me. I'm not talking about in church, right? It's when the people are still citizens of a nation, but they don't act like they're citizens of a nation. Their conduct is unbecoming. I wish I had time, Pastor Shannon, to preach about when people are the same, but they act different. I can't do that today. And so in this particular society, a new national trend starts. And that trend is amongst people, not everybody, but it was enough to change the temperature of a nation. Sometimes there's a saying called, when the tail starts wagging the dog, when a small group becomes so loud and effective, the whole nation is defined by it. And these people that knew what the blessing of God was, they started mocking God. The very people that God has blessed began mocking God. If you have time to write down this four-letter word, it's a, it's a bad word. It means to treat with contempt. It means to, to treat with ridicule, to play games with, to make fun of, to turn up your nose at. So, so when you see the word mock in the Bible, most of the time it's a negative connotation. And the most recognized form of mockery is verbal insults, or what we call acts of disdain. And so Isaiah, the prophet, began to warn them because he's living and he's seeing it. But remember, times change, but people don't. So America, please understand what's going on. Let's read, now we're going to speed through some of this, but I want you to read some of this and you'll realize what's happening in America has happened before to countries that knew that God had blessed them. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 18, read with me, it says what? Woe to those who draw sin along with cords of deceit and wickedness as with cart ropes. Now in the Bible, in this particular uh, set of scriptures, there's six things that Isaiah says woe to. I don't have time for six. I'll, try for, I'll do three or four. But he, the word woe means disaster is coming. It means that you're in trouble. And so he's talking about the very people that know God. And he says destruction starts with these lesser sins, like deceit and they become stronger. He says, and they become so heavy, they have to be pulled with a cart rope. What is a cart rope? I'm glad you asked me that. I looked it up for you. A cart rope is a rope that's so strong that it can pull any heavy load. If a building was not uh, fixed to the ground, it could pull it away. It's the strongest thing you have. Your sin has become so attached to you, and it's become so heavy, he was saying, that now you pull it along wherever you go. You, you become addicted to it. You cannot win the war on drugs because you are addicted to it. You might be white collar, but you still got to get your fix when you get it. You, you, you will have an addiction. You will become an addictive nation. You were free, but now this thing, this monkey is on your back. They begin to question God's effectiveness. Turn to verse number 19, Isaiah chapter 5. And what they do, this, this verse 19 talks about the pursuit of sin. The pursuit of sin. Read, it says what? Woe to those that say, let God hurry. Let him hasten his work so we may see it. The plan of the Holy One of Israel. Let it approach. Let it come into view so we may know it. So what are they doing in, in verse 19? They're mocking God. The very people that knew God are now challenging God. He can't stop us. Well, let it happen then. If y'all say God's so great, let this happen. I don't see Jesus coming back. So it becomes a national thing to openly mock God. Nothing's new under the sun. Times change. People don't. Mocking God is related to ridicule. When you ridicule God and, and, and that defiance and dismiss God's order of things. And there's a danger when you redefine what God does. As a matter of fact, there's something, as one of the woes, I think number three is, is, is when people justify sin. Go to verse number 20. Go, go to verse number 20 and read. The Bible says what? Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet, and 
Sweetie, for bitter. America, you are now justifying your sin openly. You say now that God is bad and sin is good. And God said, disaster is coming to you, nation. Because what you've done, you replaced what God has said in order. And said, that's no longer good. That's the bad thing. And what was bitter is now considered sweet. So now you digest the thing that's going to upset your stomach and rot in your bowels as a nation. Make sense in church? I got 14 minutes and 6 seconds. Mockers lack judgment. Doesn't even make sense sometimes to do this kind of thing. And they make conscious decisions for evil. Uh, and I always tell y'all, everything's tied to money. Yeah. You want to know why people do things? Follow the money. And one of the woes he talks about in Isaiah 5, go to verse 23 real quick and read it. says what? Woe to those who acquit the guilty for a bribe. What is bribe? Money. Woe to those who acquit the guilty for a bribe, but deny justice to the innocent. America. And he is actually speaking to a nation that was once a, a nation. No, everybody wasn't godly, but they respected the throne of God, the work of God, the word of God. And even though Uzziah is dead, it has now become, in that year, it starts this trend. And it, and it filters on down and further and further down. Now, I don't have time to go through the other six, but let me say this to the people of God. If people are bold enough to mock God, please don't mistake the fact they won't mock you. Y'all got a minute? Let me show you something real quick. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 16. Read this with me. The Bible says what? But they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising his words, and scoffing at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against his own people until they had, there was no remedy. It is all through scripture, especially the Old Testament, all the prophets got mocked for telling the truth. Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Elisha, they were all mocked because they told the truth. And finally, it got on God. Popularity I know it's something we dream about in this culture. Everybody wants to have a lot of likes. They want people following them. But if you're a man or woman of God, I'm saying this to you right here in church, and you speak for God, remember, you cannot serve two masters. And this world will find out what you really mean and who you really are, and they will begin to judge you for that. So you might as well wear it boldly. Even Jesus was mocked. You think about it. The Roman soldiers mocked him. Herod mocked him. There was a crook dying on the cross next to Jesus. He was convicted, and he mocked Jesus. But if you if you ran inside of God, get yourself down the cross. Hey man, take me with you. The Jewish leaders walked by him on Calvary and made fun of him. It's part of what happens, guys. Sometimes you won't be popular. Make sense in church? I got 10 minutes, so let me just break this down all the way down. Out of all the mocking we've talked about, do you know the most the shrewdest type of mocking of God actually happens in the house of God? It's the worst. Charles Finney said this, read with me, he said what? To mock God is to pretend to love and serve him when we do not. You know what they call that? A hypocrite. It is the worst mockery in the world to sit in God's house, to take the titles of God's uh, elected officials and not believe in him, to be in the pulpit and be a whole mom, to be a teacher of Sunday school and be a lying person. It is the worst type of hypocrisy. It's the worst type of way to mock God, to be in his house and not respect his house. How many of you brothers let somebody come to your house and they walk in and take off their shoes and put, put their feet up on your dining room table and that's all you got to eat today? I thought I'd come to your house, man, and we had it set the other. 
What would you do to that brother? Come on, Harold, you're from the west side. I know you got no canary yellow today, but we ain't no that. I don't mean you're soft. You, you grab your knife, that's right, see? Don't get mad at him. Y'all got knives too. Anyway, uh, that's the worst type of mockery there is. Yeah. Is when we say we're people of God and we don't. Yeah. Can I give you one more key before we go? Yes. Here's the last one for the day. Human mockery does not cancel God's sovereignty. Amen. Amen. Human mockery does not cancel God's sovereignty. The word sovereign means supreme power, yes. supreme authority. Just because people don't believe in God does not make him God. Yes. Now here in America, the trend is happening. I just saw this headline on the internet. If you see it on the internet, you know it's true. <laughs> Pew Research Center did a, a poll just before COVID hit. And if you go to the internet, just put that in, into your, 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 your drive, this incredible study comes up about church attendance and Christianity. And the headline is, in the United States, the decline of Christianity continues at a rapid pace. Wow. The subtopic when you go says, and non-belief in atheism is growing. And there are graphs that show in less than five years, those in America that say they are Christian dropped almost nine and a half percent. Those that say they are atheists and agnostics went up almost 17 percent, right here in the United States. But just because America does not bless God does not mean that God does not bless America. We can cancel God in our culture, but we cannot cancel his authority in the earth. Amen. Now there's a scripture that I'm going to end with that all of you know. So Mother Tucker, I'm going to put it up in the King James Version of the Bible. Because I've heard you mother say, he don't use the real Bible. I'm just messing with it. Galatians 6 and 7. How many remember this scripture when you were little? Read with me. It says what? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Mm. I got to finish that in four and a half minutes, Brother David, so time. The backstory to this is this. The church was brand new. Jesus had, had ascended to heaven, and the New Testament church was spreading throughout the countries, and the word of God was being taught. But there was a mix of false teachers, even in those churches. And they were taught simple things like the laws that God had put together. One of the laws was the law of sowing and reaping. And first natural, then spiritual. And so uh, they were taught, like we are taught, and I don't talk about money often, but they said God had a law that whatever you sow, whatever you uh, a plant yes. in the earth, yes. the earth has the power to take what you put in the ground and you tend to, and it will produce something after your effort and after that seed. Yes. And so the Bible says that these people had started, uh, became so good at telling folks God can't do everything that the prophet said he could do. God is limited. The Holy Spirit had already fallen, but God is limited in his ability to do things. Because they even taught, even as you give, God's going to bless you. And so the fight started because God ain't going to bless you. Don't put your money in that because it's not going to come back. So the apostle writes to church and says, be not deceived. Or in other words, please don't fall for the deception. Paul didn't say men don't mock God. Men mock God. He said God is not mocked, though. They can try to do it, but they can't change what God is. He says, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Kenny, if I had an hour and a half, I could be really good at this. But the word I want you to look at is the word soweth. E-T-H on the end of a word means to continue to do so. He said, whatever a man soweth, a human soweth, because most animals don't know how to make a farm. 
They don't have to plant flowers, but whatever a human soweth or continues to sow, the, the, the seed that they plant, any seed that is sown. The actual Greek uh, definition means any seed that you sow, whatever a man sow, that's what God said, the Bible said he shall also reap. Now the word whatsoever means, it's a word, a uh, short word, eon. The word eon means whatever thing. It don't matter what the thing is. Whatever thing a man, no matter what he sows, he shall also reap. And regardless, you will reap that thing. The law is applicable to anything in your life. Whatever you sow naturally, you will reap it naturally. He that wants friends must show himself friendly. You cannot be a friend to somebody if you're always down in the dumps. But, but my, my Mara, she can go on an airplane. She happened this week. I mean, came went back to Phoenix. Southwest had lost the internet, so she couldn't watch no movies. And I said, read her. I, she texted me on the plane. I said, well, read a book. And she said quickly, as she always does, I don't have a book. <laughs> it's a three and a half hour flight. By the time she landed, there was a picture of her and an old white lady. <laughs> And they smile and hold and hug and everything. I said, well, who is that? that that's, what's her name? Uh, uh, I forgot it. You forgot her name. She's my Marlene. Marlene. Marlene is 80 something years old. She knew Marlene's whole story. We were just friends. I went down the largest train, baggage train, where they helped her with her bags. I'm like, that's friendliness. But if you sow destruction, you're going to reap destruction. People that get in fights always get in fights. Fight them at the church. Folks, folks that start church fights, they got home fights, work fights, family reunion fights. When they was in the first grade, they had fights. When they were in high school, they was in fights. I'm just fighting me. I mean, they're fighting people. They got a fighting spirit. The Bible said, Paul said, listen, y'all, don't let these preachers deceive you. God ain't mocked. God didn't put something in there and just works in the Old Testament. It works all the time. That's a great thing about it. Kevin, I'm out of time. I, got, I only got about a minute and a half, so why don't you start playing the credits? Does <laughs> <laughs> this make any sense in church? Yeah. Because when you look on the news, you start panicking. You start thinking, my God, what's wrong? It, it's happened before. There was no internet. This is your internet right here. The man, the man of God saw it, he talked about it. It's the exact same thing that's happening. They start losing wars they should have won. America can't even win the war on drugs. God is still there for us to love us. Octavia Butler, wonderful words that she said. Let's just leave on these words. Sister Butler said what? To get along with God, consider the consequences of your behavior. God responds to our behavior. He, he responds to our worship. He responds to our praise. He responds to, like even with Uzziah, as long as he sought the Lord, God just gave him success. What an expert on nothing. He wasn't raised that way. His daddy was a king before him, and he was just an average king. He's all right. He had things at his, at his beck and call, but he didn't use those things. But, but God put the ideas in his brain, and, and he would do these things, and they became successful. I'm looking forward to seeing what God does in the next 20 years of running far. No, no, I won't be leading it, but I'll be watching it. <laughs> Because as long as you seek God, no matter what's happening around you, there's going to be success. That makes sense in church? Close your Bibles. We thank God so much for you guys watching and being with us today. As I said earlier today, the conduct causes condemnation, but it also, Christ's conduct on the cross, caused us to have salvation, to have freedom, to, to live in a world that may not respect him, but the kingdom lives in us. He's baptized us with his Holy Spirit. Because of the work of Christ on the cross, his conduct 
allowed us to be where we are today. Maybe you have questions about God and about salvation, even in the midst of your confusion right now. There's a number on the screen right now. That number goes to our prayer line. You can call that number now. And if you don't pick up right away, just leave your name and number. We'll call you back. If you don't leave a number, just leave your name or your initials. You can even make up a name. We don't know. But if you have a prayer request, leave that request. And we'll take it to the war and we'll pray for you. And ask God to work on your behalf. Maybe you have questions about following God, living in purpose, salvation. We can do that as well. And finally, because of technology, people can now, and they're doing it now, they're joining churches online. And we have that opportunity for you to do as well. There are QR codes on our website. Just swipe your phone on that, send it in. And uh, our, our new members ministry will get in touch with you within three or four days. God loves you. He cares about you. I know the world right now is hotter than it's ever been, wetter than it's ever been, at least in, in our dispensation. But God is still in control. Your conduct, he's, he, he cares. He knows you're not perfect. But he can help you walk out this thing in a certain way. God bless you. You have a really great week. Take care of yourself. Give our audience a hand as they take off. Y'all take care. Be good. All right. And now it's time to give. Those of you that are watching our broadcast online via Facebook or YouTube, if this is your week to give your tithes and offering, you may do so via PayPal or Tithely. You can also mail your payment into our post office box located in the city of Glenwood or Come up to the church office during our office hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And if you're visiting with us, please be sure to give your tithes to your church home. However, if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you'd like to sow a seed in good soil, we'll be sure you will receive a receipt for your contributions. God bless you. You can give through these portals on the screen as well. And thank you. The Lord bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's say amen and may God bless you.